Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is my ranking of every 2020 animated film I saw this year. 2020 is now behind us, but before we move on to new films, let's go ahead and take a look back at some of last year's best and worst animated offerings. So keeping in tradition, every year I do a ranking of all of the new release animated films of that year, and 2020 definitely saw a downturn in the output of animated films. I only have 13 on my list this year, which is a huge decrease from normal. And I have a caveat right now, there are two films on this list which are technically 2019 releases. However, they were released in a capacity in which I could watch them in 2020. If I didn't have a way to watch either of those films in 2019, they weren't able to make my ranking last year, and they got a theatrical and Netflix release this year. So because of all of that and the decrease in overall animated films, I decided to include them. Now just a reminder, this is my own personal ranking. I cannot wait to hear your own ranking in the comment section down below, so make sure to share your list. Kicking us off at number 13, aka last, I have Pokemon Mewtwo Strikes Back. Oh my gosh, Pokemon went into the realm of 3D computer animation, and I pretty much wish they hadn't. Mewtwo Strikes Back is nearly exactly the same as Pokemon the first movie that released back in my childhood in the late 90s. And this time around, they just updated the actual animation and added a scene here or there. Unfortunately, the scenes they did add only worked to dumb down the material and make it more remedial. And the character was gone in the CG remakes. Honestly, it was really void of any sort of soul or depth or humanity heart that the original had and it left us with just this shell of a remake that honestly leaves you wondering why not just watch the original I much prefer the style of I choose you if they're going to try to remake some of their old storylines where they do tell a story we're familiar with and put in little beats, but still add on and improve upon the beautiful 2D animation. Coming in at number 12, I have Animal Crackers. Yes, another Netflix animated film. And this just was not good. I will start off by saying that much like every other small budget CG 3D animated film, it had that under-processed, too little frame rate type of flow to it. The characters don't quite move as smoothly as you're accustomed to with the larger animated studios. However, outside of that, I actually thought the animation was quite nice. The character designs were cute, and I thought it looked pleasing, child like wonder type way. Unfortunately, it's that script that is just dreadful. Oh my gosh, the comedy and the dialogue is horrible in this film. The idea could have been a whole lot of fun, but they just did nothing interesting or fun with it. I don't want to rag too much on Animal Crackers because it took these creators a long time to finally find some distribution. But after seeing the film, it becomes a little bit understandable why it was such a hard sell for release. At number 11, I have The Croods, A New Age. I had seen the Rotten Tomatoes score and I had seen a pretty positive reactions overall when this film was released. Theaters here haven't been open, so I had to wait for that PVOD to come out. And then I watched it and wondered what everyone else saw. Because <laughs> I did not like Croods 2 very much. Once again, the animation is beautiful. It's very vibrant and colorful. It is a feast on your eyes. It looks amazing. And the creature designs are a lot of fun. Particularly, I loved those wolf spiders. They were so cool. <laughs> 
But other than that, the script is actually quite remedial. This is a story we have seen over and over and over again. And even the caveman meeting new age man type of setting couldn't really elevate that. And then we get to the comedy and it's horrible. Oh my gosh, I don't think I laughed at literally anything that was said in this film. I really found the screenplay and the jokes to be cringeworthy. I wasn't a huge fan of the first one. I was quite shocked it got an Oscar nomination and didn't really see the need to add on this a very lackluster sequel. Coming in at number 10, I have Scoob. Hey, Scoob! <laughs> I enjoyed Scoob overall, though I have some big problems with it as well. And I'll say this, if the film had just stuck with the concept of that opening, the pre-credits, this would have been amazing because everything that happens when they're kids is amazing and I loved it. I also loved everything between Shaggy and Scooby and their friendship and how it developed throughout the film. I thought the gang was fun. I thought particularly the voice actors did a great job of bringing the characters to life and giving that like friendship bond. And while there are certainly some very dated jokes in here, I also thought there were some fun moments and fun jokes to go along. Unfortunately, the big problem with Scoob is that it was trying to set up a Hanna-Barbera universe instead of telling a Scooby-Doo story, and it really suffered from that as we went from place to place, got villains and characters from all across the Hanna-Barbera franchises, and stuffed them into this story that was much more of a big adventure rather than a Scooby-Doo mystery that you were hoping for. But overall, particularly I thought the beginning and the end were really cute and the bond between Scooby and Shaggy stuck with me and that's why it ends up placing above the films before. Coming in at number 9, I have Over the Moon. <sighs> I know this is going to be quite the controversial place. <laughs> But I just didn't connect with Over the Moon. I went into this film anticipating that I was actually going to quite love it. And I came out really disappointed by it. I think the heart is in the right place and I love getting to immerse myself into aspects of another culture like we did here. Plus the lore with the moon goddess was really interesting. And the idea of dealing with trauma was also very interesting. However, beyond that, it really didn't do much for me. The little stepbrother was so annoying. And where we take their relationship felt completely unearned to me. The dog was pretty annoying as well. And then when we get up to the moon itself and are in this big, bright, fantastical world, the music was just all over the place when it came to style. We have a ping pong match song that I just thought was ridiculous. And honestly, nothing on this soundtrack really stuck with me. Like, at all. Fortunately, Over the Moon wasn't able to pull up my heartstrings like I had hoped it would, and we just went through these really long stretches where I found it much more annoying than I did adorable. Coming in at number eight, I have Children of the Sea. Yes, the first anime that was technically a 2019 film, Children of the Sea actually got a Netflix release here in 2020. And I was actually looking forward to going out and seeing this in the movie theater, but 2020 happened. And ultimately, I found Children of the Sea to be a beautiful film, but one that kind of got bogged down heavily in its own lore. I honestly wish they had kind of just simplified the story a bit. I honestly wish we could have just like stripped back and simplified this story a bit more and told a more straightforward folktale rather than this really kind of convoluted idea with the brothers and this girl who is like connected with them but not really it all just became a lot particularly as we worked through that third act but the animation was so stunning you look at that poster it's of this like aquarium setting and it's 
gorgeous and the trailers look gorgeous in that sense. Even when we're not in the sea, the animation is top tier stunning. But I do wish we had gotten more elements of the sea itself and had just focused in this story. But as it is, it is quite a spiritually moving piece and when we do get to the core and message of the film in that third act it does ring true but then i think even there we push it a little bit far well coming in at number seven i have trolls world tour trolls world tour is one that i really kind of have been conflicted on ever since i watched it however as we have come now to the end of the year Looking back on 2020 animation, Trolls World Tour has actually stuck with me a lot more than a lot of these other films. And I think that particularly has to do with how daring and sophisticated the ultimate message of the film was. It was easily miles better than the first Trolls, in my opinion, in which the messaging of that film was horrible and problematic. This film gave history and gave you a lesson on what happened in history, whether it be through pop culture at large or music specifically, and then went directly in the face of that not so great message of the first and said that it's our differences and our unique cultures that make up this beautiful landscape. And I thought that was a wonderful message to send. I also enjoyed quite a few of the original songs, particularly I loved the Kelly Clarkson Country Land song. <laughs> the covers, well, mm, not great, we'll say that. And I found Poppy to be quite grating in this film overall. She was just too much, which I know is part of what her character is all about, but my goodness. And a lot of that humor still just didn't quite land. But Ultimately, Trolls World Tour swung for a bigger message and a more complex narrative in what it was trying to say and succeeded on that front. It just kind of fell off on the other stuff. Come again at number six, I have a Shaun the Sheep movie, Farmageddon. I adore the first Shaun the Sheep the movie that came out a few years ago. I think it is amazing, so adorable, so daring, a really beautiful film. And in a lot of ways, Farmageddon also accomplishes these things. First of all, it's adorable because that little alien is so cute. Plus, Shaun himself is adorable. The baby sheeps are too cute for words. And of course, it stays true to the character of Shaun the Sheep and his franchise that he's built out. However, taking it to this outer space and this theme park really diluted the story overall for me. It didn't land as well as the first did. The hijinks just weren't on that same intelligence level that we had received previously. It's bright, it's colorful, and it's cute, but unfortunately Farmageddon turned out to be one of those films that didn't stick with me. I kind of forgot about it pretty quickly after I watched it which was not the case for its predecessor. It's still cute, it's still fun enough, but it's lacking that extra level of intelligence and comedic timing and work that I was hoping for. Breaking into our top five, I have The Willoughbys. Now this one was actually quite divisive, but I personally thought The Willoughbys was really fun. First of all, I loved the whole roll doll type of atmosphere that was brought into this film. The characters were super macabre and in the most delightful way. I loved these kids. <laughs> and I thought the story was really sophisticated and really charming as we worked with these kids who were just trying to find some love and find an appropriate family. Plus all of the lore was a great time that we learned about the Willoughby's themselves. The animation was stunning. This mixture and blend that they put together to create the look of this film was actually really quite groundbreaking and beautiful. Now there are some aspects to the film like that candy shop and everything that comes off of that that never quite felt a part of the main story to me. It never fully gelled together. 
But overall, the Willoughbys delivered the jerk sensibility of humor I was hoping for, and I really enjoyed it. Coming in at number four, I have Onward. Another one that was actually more divisive than I would have anticipated. I loved Onward, but I thought the vocal work from Tom Holland and Chris Pratt, Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Octavia Spencer all was fantastic. And the work that Holland and Pratt did to create this brotherly bond was fantastic. Plus the animation was a lot of fun. Some really beautiful picture-esque animation mixed in with this great fantasy lore. Now I am a sucker for a good fantasy film and Onward certainly delivers on that front. The character of Ian was so relatable and I found him to just be extremely charming and could very much translate myself to that character. It was really funny with some wonderful sight gags as well as really weaved in humor through the script. The adventure was a blast and I just had a great time with Onward. It hit me in the field, it made me laugh, and I thought it was quite adorable. Coming in at number three, I have Weathering With You. Yes, our second 2019 anime to make the list. This became available for me to watch in early 2020 through a Fathom event at the movie theater. And I rushed out opening weekend to go see this. And ultimately, I loved it. Though, not quite as good as Your Name. However, the animation is once again out of this world. We deal a lot with water and rain in this film and it just looks otherworldly i mean it is amazing the animation of this film at large is stunning it completely transports you and what i love actually about my top three picks here are that they all execute different styles of animation pretty much to perfection and are a great showcase of different ways that you can bring animation to life in gorgeous fashion. And Weathering With You pretty much is picturesque from start to finish. Plus the music is amazing. And they had this music specifically written in for the film and done here. And it's amazing. It fits so perfectly and they utilize it expertly throughout the film. Plus, I really enjoyed this connection story between our two leads. We have a lot of really fun humor here as well. And it comes to a head with a really tense and emotional final sequence. My only real complaint is that animes in general, particularly anime like love story type of films, such as Your Name, have very similar endings. And this one, once again, has a very similar ending. But I still found it to be quite the beautiful, transportive experience. So coming in, in the runner-up position, at number two, I have Wolfwalkers. Oh my gosh, what a stunning film from a studio who has delivered nothing but stunning animated films. From The Secret of Kells to Song of the Sea to Breadwinner, and now we have Wolfwalkers. Every one of these films stand on their own and deliver absolutely beautiful and completely unique films. And this year, I think they delivered their most stunning animation to date because Wolfwalkers is absolutely gorgeous. It is this almost watercolor storybook with swirling lines and vibrant colors just brought to life. And it is amazing to watch in motion. And of course, I'm a sucker for an environmental animal message and Wolfwalkers delivers in spades there. But it also delivers in some wonderful platonic girl power action that I thought was wonderful. Our main characters are so interesting. They're so different, but they are so strong in their own rights. I loved the mythology of the Wolfwalkers. And while it's not a direct take from any myth, from the Celtic region, it's an amalgamation of all of the different wolves 
myths and stories that the culture has held so dear. Plus the story itself, the atmosphere, the animation, and of course, that amazing original score all pay a beautiful homage to Celtic culture without ever feeling insincere, and I loved that. Now many have said that Wolfwalkers is very conventional, but I definitely would agree it plays it safer in the story department than any of the studio's previous entries. However, I think that's just what they needed, because this clicked in a way that none of their previous films have clicked, and I've loved all three of those, and delivered this beautiful, emotional, inspiring story. It honestly, has been flip-flopping back and forth between two and one in my head when it comes to animation rankings for 2020. So, at number one, my favorite animated film of 2020 is Soul. Yes, the latest release from Pixar Studios. I loved Soul. And ultimately, it was the daring nature of what Pete Docter and Pixar did with their animated offering in Soul that put this over the edge into that number one spot. Because this is easily the most adult film from Pixar Studios to date. Exploring existentialism in this type of fashion with an adult lead character was a very daring move and they pulled it off expertly. I love the message and I love the ideas behind the difference between your spark and your purpose, your passions versus what you are here to do, and how those don't have to be the same and that's still okay. A great reminder for people to live beyond your passion, to live beyond not only your work and the work you're doing, whether that is your passion or not, but to just live and how that is worth it still. I found that to be deeply moving and beautiful. And now we get to see how top tier 3D CG animation is handled. And wow, the photorealism when we are roaming New York City is stunning. And then we get this highly inventive, crazy 2D feeling type of spirit world that looks amazing. <laughs> I loved Joe as a main character, and I also really enjoyed 22 and found myself relating to both of them for very different reasons, but equally. And of course, I would be remiss not to talk about the original score because it is amazing. The music that was utilized for this film, it's possibly the best score from any film, animated or otherwise, in 2020. For me, Soul ticked off every box that I go into Pixar hoping for, and it did so in beautiful and magnificent fashion, and it moved me on a deeper level than any other animated film was able to in 2020. So that is it. That is my personal ranking for all of the new release animated films I saw in 2020. Let me know, do you agree, do you disagree, and more importantly, leave your ranking in the comment section down below, or of course you can hit me up on Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button as well and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on my latest videos. I love you all so much for your continued support. Mwah! Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!